Like I have a crush on this guy right now who's totally marriage material because he's married. You're so hot. I you in front of my grandparents. <laughs> yeah, you should be ashamed of yourself. Like, I love that. Thank you very much. So I remember I wanted to try waxing, so I was like, oh, I'll just go to Walgreens and get a kit and do it myself. I like arts and crafts. <laughs> and I don't like arts and crafts. I've never finished a scrapbook in my life. Didn't finish this one either. I didn't get past the second page, if you know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. No, it was the worst. They give you microwavable wax, but every microwave is different. I just put it in and pressed popcorn. I didn't know. Oh God, I, uh, I burnt myself. I scolded my, not sc scalded. <laughs> I always, yeah, scold, I was like, um, yeah, I really taught it. I scalded myself and I only got two strips in and then I gave up and I was like, well, I guess this is my new look. <laughs> Looks like a pause button, but you know what? <laughs> Metaphor for my sex life now. Putting this bitch on pause. I was clever with it. I called it the Patch Adams. Uh, <laughs> Because when I put a clown nose on it, it made sick kids laugh. So that's why I called it that. It was like a fun day of volunteering that I did. So thank you. I don't know what to do down there anymore. It's like I, um, I, t I used to take pictures um, because my, my ex-boyfriend asked me to send naked photos. And I was smart. I didn't put my face in it, uh, mostly because that's how he asked for them. But also because... <laughs> That's the smart way to do it, but it's hard to make that picture look sexy. You know, you're just laying on a bed, you crop off your head, it just looks like a crime scene photo. Like, it's not a good look. It was the worst. Eventually, he was just like, stop sending me these headless horsewoman photos. I don't need them in my life or my phone. So then, I remember I got a text once that was like, send pics at like 4 a.m. And I was like, gross, no. But then he had a really good argument for why I should, because he was like, come on. And that was it. But I was like, wow, okay. I'll fax him over promptly. <laughs> Terrible. Ugh. I, um, I miss... I miss sex. I'm gonna do it again someday. I gotta get better at masturbating in the meantime. I'm terrible at it. I don't know what I'm doing. It's, um, most of the time I just find an itch and I scratch and I'm like, yes, am I done? Like that felt great. <laughs> but I'm not done. Then I just fake an orgasm by myself just to get it over with. It's... Oh God. I don't know what to do. I, um, I try to fantasize, I try to watch like, I'm not into porn, but I'll try to like find my porn, like a, a good John Mayer clip on YouTube or something. And I put that on mute. And then I, uh, yeah, well I like his music. It's just for me, it's about his face. Cause you can't sit on a voice. So that's just how I feel about John Mayer. Um, but I can't, it's like, cause then I'm like, he's a celebrity, you can't have him, it's stupid. So I try to fantasize about like, maybe someone in my life that I'm like, oh, like maybe, like I have a crush on this guy right now who's totally marriage material, cause he's married. But um, it's, uh, that's the worst to fantasize about, cause then I'm just touching myself to his wife and kids dying and that's never good. It's, uh, I mean, I do it in a jet ski accident, so it's kind of sexy, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they have a lot of fun up until that bridge, but that bridge just comes out of nowhere. And she shouldn't have been drunk jet skiing though. That's kind of on her. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not looking for, I'm looking forward to having sex again, but sober sex is gonna be weird because I'm gonna be um, conscious for when you guys uh, That's always frightening. Do you guys know that you turn into demons when you Are you aware of that? the thing that you are conscious of? It scared me the first time it happened, a lot. I did not see it, because you're so sweet to us up until that moment. It's just like, oh, baby, and then it's just like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, whoa, where's Scott? What did you do with Scott? Ah! It's horrifying. 
It's so scary. And then it, it gets, and then you, then it's just, you collapse on us. <laughs> and it gets really quiet. And I'm like, the beast is dead. <laughs> I killed him. But then you reanimate back into your old cell. And you're like, hey, babe. I'm like, I've seen the real you. Get off. <laughs> so scary <laughs> but it's what you do and it's weird when you think about it because all of us we're all here right now like living right now because some dude once went like Bruh! isn't that weird <laughs> have you ever thought about that all of us because some dude i know and by some dude i mean your father <laughs> Like, you know, just this, I'm being this version of a girl that he's gonna fall in love with. Like, I'm clean and, and nice, and I've never done anal. Like, I'm just like this pure, and I have. Uh, not like a ton, but like, he asked me if I've done it, and of course I said no. I'm not gonna be like, yeah, I'm a huge butt whore. I'm not gonna like, you have to say, never done it. And I know a lot of people in here are like, no, I would never do it. Because I used to be that way, and then I did coke. And <laughs> no. You are missing out. You should do it. But if you don't want to do it, girls, I, instead of being like, no, it's gross, I think you should go the other way and like seem super into it. Like, too into it. <laughs> that's, the, that's the best. Just be like, yeah, we should. And I think I would love it because I like love pooping. So if you say it that way, like really sell it. I know it's gross, but be like, I love it going out, so I'll probably love it going in. Like, get in there, cowboy. Call him cowboy. Just freak him out. He'll leave you, so you'll never have to do it. I take the pill um, when I remember, so that's not how you're supposed to take it. A lot, my friend was like, why don't you do it like a diaphragm? And I'm like, are you from the 80s? Like, what's going on? I didn't really do my research on the diaphragm. I should have asked my grandma about it, but she uses a pull-out method, so... <laughs> I've always heard, heard about the diaphragm on, like, old episodes of Seinfeld and Antiques Roadshow, and I'd never seen one, so I Google imaged it, and um, the image that came up, I don't know if you guys have seen a diaphragm, but they look exactly like that toy we used to get as kids, that little rubber thing you flip, then you, like, set it on something and you wait. <laughs> and then it like pops. I don't even know what those are called. I think they're diaphragms, guys. Yeah, I don't know how you put them in. That seems weird. Maybe you would just flip it and then set it down and then like hover over it and like wait. David Spade, the host with the most step stools in your apartment. David, you've seriously influenced so many female comics' haircuts. <laughs> Rob Riggle, ugh, I want to thank you so much for fighting the war against terrorism and subtlety. <laughs> Jimmy A. Carr is what Ralph Macchio has to do to find a place to sleep every night. <laughs> Jewel is here, or as I call her, Trailer Swift. <laughs> Jewel, I do not want to bad mouth you since God already did. No. I think your smile is cute. I feel like your teeth are like the Spice Girls, you know? They're all different colors and they're like doing their own thing. So that's <laughs> fun. <laughs> Peyton Manning is here. That's not for you guys, that's for him. Peyton, you're here right now. You've had a lot of concussions. You're here. Don't murder your wife. I, I don't know much about football, but I love Peyton uh, in commercials. You're like, you're so good at him, like legitimately. I'd say you're the greatest of all time. I'd say like, you're like the Tom Brady of being in commercials, you know, like the greatest, like he's the greatest, right? So. And without Fuhrer ado, Ann Coulter. Oh, Ann. 
what's it like to be like a real life super villain? You know, like, I'd ask you how you sleep at night, but I'd assume just upside down in a robe of 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> Ann Coulter has written 11 books, 12 if you count Mein Kampf. Yes. Anne's been called things like a racist, anti-Semitic, homophobic, a white supremacist, and that's just while getting plowed by Bill Maher. <laughs> the only person you will ever make happy is the Mexican who digs your grave. <laughs> Rob Lowe. <laughs> You're so f***ing hot, I can't even stand it. <laughs> I'm saying, Rob defies age restrictions. <laughs> you really, you're, you're f***ing Adonis. Look at you. You look like you're sculpted. God, I had such a crush on you when I was a little girl. If only I'd known that's when I had my best shot. <laughs> Thank you so much. I am like obsessed with talking about sex. I apologize if it's not your thing, but like, come on, it's like so fun and, uh, like, we're all having sex, but we don't really, like, talk about it. Like, we'll be like, oh, yeah, I've had sex before. Like, we'll admit that, but we won't be like, oh, yeah, I've been like, Ugh. But that's, like, what you look like. No one admits that. They're like, no, I look cooler. No, you don't. You're just like, Ugh. Like, that's just a bunch of, like, skin, like, shaking. It's so gross. And you all look like it. We all do. But, like, the only thing that, like, differentiates us is, like, we put on clothes and we're like, nope, I've never done that. What's going on? Like, as soon as you're not naked, you can be like, no, I don't do that. What are you talking about? I'm a princess. Like, that's what's separating us, is just clothes. Like, you can give, like, a sloppy blowjob and put on, like, some jeans and a tank top and be like, I've never sucked a in my life. What are you talking about? Just, nope, not me. And it's like, yes, you have. If you weren't a tank top, male or female, you'd suck some dicks. Like, that's just a fact of tank tops, I think. Yeah. Pregnant women are my favorite, because you're like, I know you doing it. Like, <laughs> hey, you got stuffed. You got stuffed. Like, you know it. And, uh, and then you, oh, you can find out, like, exactly when she had sex. Like, all you have to do is ask, like, when are you due, or pretend you care, or whatever. And then <laughs> you just do some light math, and you count back nine months, and you're like, July. You were just like, oh, oh, oh. Like, in July, you were getting it. <laughs> you love it. <laughs> Yeah, you should be ashamed of yourself. Like, I love that. That's the thing about being pregnant. Like, you, if you tell your parents you're pregnant, like, you're pretty much like, Dad, Chris inside me. Come here. <laughs> I kept it in. Like, that's... <laughs> Joseph Gordon, love it, everyone! He's so cute, so adorable. I bet you eat pussy, but only with the crust cut off first. Isn't that his look? Speaking of crusty pussy, I'll get to you in a second, Sybil. I, um... I know. I know. Martha Stewart, thank you for being here. Seriously, and congratulations on getting that Thai soccer team out of your vagina. <laughs> and into your sweatshops. That's where they are now. Surprisingly, Martha said that prison food wasn't that bad, just, you know, as long as it was clean shaven, so. She loves attention to detail. Is she laughing? I'm terrified of her. No, I, and my, honestly, Martha Stewart, I'm a huge fan. And my mom is an even bigger fan. My mom has learned everything from Martha Stewart about cooking and cleaning and withholding affection, so. <laughs> it's close to my heart. Sybil's gorgeous. I'm, like, honored to meet her. And, um, and her resume is insane. Like, if you look at it, it's just, like, model, actor, singer. You name it, she's f***ed it. <laughs> I don't know any of these people. Sybil, <laughs> why am I here? Ugh. <laughs> Literally, you have like no friends. Um, <laughs> it's truly so cool to be sharing the stage with these badass women. Sybil Shepherd, Martha Stewart, uh, Margaret Cho. I'm sorry, Dom Herrera. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
I thought that was... Dom a rare, I know, you sleepy potato. <laughs> Dom, I love you, but how did you have a stroke on both sides of your face? Explain that. I don't get it. Dennis Rodman, what's up? Dennis Rodman. I first met Dennis just earlier tonight when he tried to sell me incense on the sidewalk. <laughs> I don't want any, okay? <laughs> Edward Norton is here. <laughs> hey, buddy. Ed looks to me like if a marionette became a boy and then that boy became an asshole. <laughs> right? He was so hot in Fight Club, right? When he was Brad Pitt. That was nuts. <laughs> Now let's get to Bruce! You should. Bruce, yes. this is a, honestly a real uh, a big personal moment for me to be here roasting my dead cousin's second favorite action star. <laughs> I know you obviously as the star of every DVD you kind of just find on the street. <laughs> Obviously, you had an amazing action film career until Jason Statham started balding. <laughs> I'm just not familiar with action movies. I don't know, I've never seen a single one of your films consensually. Like, <laughs> it's always what some guy puts on while he's trying to finger me on his roommate's couch. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Maybe I didn't understand the fifth element, and it wasn't because I'm a dumb girl, but because it's hard to follow that plot when you're fighting off a roofie and there's a knuckle inside you, you know? <laughs> Just me? Oh, I loved The Sixth Sense, though. I loved, and the ending when the guy came in my eye and I didn't have to watch the rest of it, that was great. <laughs> that Bruce is a very talented musician because he isn't. <laughs> Bruce has also been very active with the Make-A-Wish Foundation, which is where they make sick kids meet you so dying doesn't seem so terrible. <laughs> so cool. Bruce, in all honesty, thank you for having me here. You're really cool. You're so hot. And, I, and this is a special night. You really are. It's a special night, obviously, your families. Your daughters must be so proud of their father, Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. Oh my God, I'm sorry. Thank you. John Hayes! Keep it going for the reason Mike Pence says we have hurricanes. <laughs> You look like the little man on top of a wedding cake that a bakery would refuse to make for you. <laughs> Will and Grace was really the best you could do. It just... <laughs> just Jack. Just Jack is, uh, it's also what I'm gonna do in my hotel room alone after sitting next to Blake Griffin all night. Jesus Christ. <laughs> You're so hot. What the f <laughs> You're so hot. I'd you in front of my grandparents. I, that's how I almost want to, you know? I feel like Mimi would be proud. Blake, you look like a black guy that got made by a printer running out of ink. That's... <laughs> yeah. Chris Red is here because Comedy Central wasn't sure if Blake was black or not. You look great, Chris. Uh, you always dress like a nine-year-old who just found $1,000 on the sidewalk. <laughs> Robert De Niro is here. <laughs> Looking like Alf. Uh, I can't even believe I, I get to share this stage with you tonight, Robert De Niro. And, and by this stage, I mean the final one of your life. It's... <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't feel right about any of this. <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner, I just want to thank you for all you've done for the trans movement and the size 16 stiletto industry. <laughs> 
you were such an incredible athlete. People forget just how fast you once ran from your first family to go <laughs> be on a reality show. Seriously though, I know being a new mom is hard. <laughs> but even Casey Anthony knows the current location of her daughter. Oh. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're a Republican. I don't know why. You've already gained control over a woman's body. What does that party have to do to lose your support? Uh, be your son? <laughs> Caitlin, I, I know you've only publicly identified as a woman for a few years, but I just want you to know that I know that deep down you have always been a c And uh, <laughs> I spell it with a K though for you. <laughs> You're great, thank you. You're great. Alec Baldwin, what an honor to be here roasting Justin Bieber's wife's oldest, fattest uncle. It's like, <laughs> I'll never forget that voicemail um, that when you called your daughter Ireland a, a thoughtless little pig. Um, uh, it's gotta be one of the worst things you can call your daughter. After Ireland, actually, that's, <laughs> that name, yikes. Speaking of terrible names, your wife's name is Hilaria. Is it Hilaria, Hilar it's Hilaria? Ilaria. It's Hilaria. Uh, Ilaria? Il oh, it's so stupid. Okay, uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter, she's so hot. Dude, she's so hot and fit. Does getting screamed at burn calories? <laughs> you have four kids under the age of six. I just, how do you do it? I mean, isn't your semen just oatmeal at this point? <laughs> Oh, Robert just got excited when I said oatmeal. He started salivating. <laughs> your, your night nurse is warming it up backstage. It'll be ready in the break. I'm such a fan of the Baldwins. I've never been so sure that four people have buried a hooker together. <laughs> Alec, thank you so much for having me here tonight. <laughs> thank you. You are funny. Oh, shit.